Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Sunday worship. It's a beautiful day out there. Sun is bright, nice and warm. A good day to go out for a walk. So I encourage you, after our Sunday worship today, I encourage you to go outside in your neighborhood, just around your streets. Just go and walk. Breathe in fresh air. Enjoy the beautiful creation that God has given us. All right, you guys ready for worship? I know I am. Let us bow our heads, close our eyes, and let us pray. Let us pray for God, Holy Spirit, to touch us, to revive us, and to excite us. Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much that you bring us here. You bring us into your presence that we can worship you, that we can praise you, and that we can come and ask for your help in our lives. Father, we thank you so much because you are always there. The only person that never leaves us, especially during time of difficulties, you are always there. Father, we know that in our lives, there will be many battles, many challenges. There will, many, there will be many spiritual battles. So Father, we ask that you, you comfort us, you guide us, you teach us during these difficult times. Help us to get a better understanding of the situation through your words, through your teaching. And as we listen to your words, listen to your teachings, Father, help us to, to walk the way you want us to walk, to talk the way you want us to talk, and to, to be in action the way you want us to be. Father, we thank you so much. We want to worship you because you're the only one worthy of praise. Brothers and sisters, I ask you to Put aside all your troubles, all your needs. Put it to the sides. And just let God touch you this morning. Let God come into you as we sing, worship, and praise to him. We pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let us sing. This morning, let us all just take a few moments to set our minds at ease and forward to God. Let's humble ourselves in front of Him and remember that the Almighty God and His one and only Son down to earth to show the greatest possible act of humility, which is by dying for us. So let's close our eyes now and say our own prayers to God. Oh, kneel me down again. Oh, kneel me down again. Here at your feet, show me how much you love humanity. Oh, Spirit, be the star. 
that leads me to the humble heart of love I see in you. Cause you are the God of the broken, the friend of the weak. You wash the feet of the weary, embrace the ones in need. I want to be like you, Jesus, to have this heart in me. You are the God of the humble. You are the humble King. Here in the dusty ground. Here in the dusty ground, I found.
things in the world that distract you. God, that you would help us to just think of you and all that you've done in our lives, God. That you're to be in awe. What a miracle it is that we're still here. You are so faithful. You are such a good God. And sometimes we forget that. Sometimes we kind of just stray on our own and we don't realize. Oh, everything good is from you.
not just with our ears, but with our heart, God, that we may not have itching ears, God. We're not here to just fill the void, God, but we're here to really listen to what God has to us today, God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you for bringing such wonderful worship. Thank you for bringing us into God's presence. My dear brothers and sisters, are you ready for God's words? If you are, you're at the right place. I want you guys to prepare, prepare your hearts so that we can pray. And once we pray, after we pray, we're going to study. We're going to study God's words. Today we're going to talk about spiritual battles, spiritual battles. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for bringing us here. We are here because we love you. We are gathering because we need to hear your voice. We need you in our lives. We cannot go through life without you in it. Because the decisions that we make in our lives depends on wisdom from you. So Father, we ask that you teach us what we don't know. Help us to understand situations in our lives, within our family, in our workplaces, and just everywhere we go. Help us to understand that you are in control, that you're gonna be there for us and guiding us through. Father, we pray for protection. Father, we pray for healing. For those who are physically in need of healing, Father, we pray for them. Whatever physical ailments that they may have, Father, we pray that <coughs> if it is within your will, you heal them. Father, we pray for all the Christians in this world so as they 
try very hard to spread the gospel, spread the good news while facing oppositions. Father, you give them encouragement. You also give them strength. Father, be with them. Father, I pray that you be with our church here, that we can also continue to be the light of the world so that when people come and see us, they see you. Thank you so very much for everything that you've done for us. Father, thank you so much. We pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Okay, brothers and sisters, we are talking about spiritual battle. The scripture from last week in the Mandarin congregation is Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. But I'm going to concentrate on verses 10 through 13. So if you have your Bible with you, you can open to it. And if you have your phone, you can also turn to it. I will have it on the PowerPoints. So let us read. Let us read the scripture first. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the evil scheme, a devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 starts with the important six words. Finally, finally, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. We need the Lord to be strong. Cannot do it on your own. But let me tell you, contrary to what you and I may think or feel or may want to believe, our struggles in life is not against people. The Bible is very clear. It's against flesh and it's not against flesh and blood. So who is it against? It is against the prince of this world, and that is Satan himself. This is true even with our world today, with all the current issues, which will, I will touch upon later today. Look at the world today. I'm not sure if you're like me. I've been asking, what is going on with our world today? For me, there are always things going on in this world, in this world that is far beyond our understanding what our eyes are able to see. That's a spiritual battle. That spiritual battle, Peter warned in 1 Peter 5, 8 to 9. Be alert and sober mind. Your enemy is the devil, prowls like prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith. And listen to Apostle John in Revelation 12, 17. He paints this powerful picture of our enemy as a dragon that has declared war on the followers of Jesus, and that is us. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring. Those who can keep God's commands and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. So the dragon was enraged and he went to wage war against us, you and I. You and I. The Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul warns us in 2 Corinthians chapter 2.11, that we must not let Satan are with us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. So the question is, the question I have for you is, is how exactly will the devil try to outwit and devour us? 
What are his schemes? What is he trying to do? But before I get to that, I want to let you know one thing, one very, very important thing. Satan is not equal, is not the equal opposite of God. I'm going to use Star Wars as an analogy. Satan is not like a dark force who's battling the same power as the light side of the force. It's not like that. They don't have equal power. You see, Satan may be powerful, but he is not as powerful as our God because God is omnipotent. Satan is not. And Satan, unlike God, is not all present. He is not everywhere at the same time. And therefore, he cannot be there. God is, though. God is omnipresent, meaning that he is everywhere at the same time. He could be here. He could be in China. He could be in Europe right now. But Satan is not. Satan is not. But Satan, be careful. Satan is cunning. Satan is intelligent. He is a schemer. He has devised an effective strategy to leverage his influences for the maximum impact in our world. That's how smart he is. So how does he do that? How does Satan do that? Satan does that by targeting societal structures. Structures in society. Satan uses that to influence a vast number of people. You see, you could corrupt a small number of group of people who control the largest cultural structures. And then those institutions and structures will do his bidding. Satan's bidding in the lives of thousands and even millions of people like you and I. Are you tracking with me? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Understand this. Here's the deal. Satan does not have to target you and I individually. He doesn't do that. He doesn't have to do that. Instead, he simply has to infect political, religious, economical, educational, entertainment systems, all these or the bloodstream of a culture. The bloodstream of a culture. It flows through all this. And Satan just needs to influence this. And it's going to be like a virus rapidly spreading throughout, infecting the entire system. You got to give Satan credit. That's a wickedly brilliant plan. He's pretty smart. He has done this effectively throughout human history. Just look in history. He has done this throughout history, and he's doing it now. So let me give you a short list of what I feel passionately what Satan is implementing in our society today. And I want you to listen to this carefully. Satan is working hard to break down our family. God values lives and values family, but Satan wants to destroy it because a strong family is a strong nation. We talked about that. But Satan wants to destroy it because if it destroys the family, it will destroy your society. It will destroy your nation. The largest abortion organization is called Planned Parenthood. You may not know that. You may think it's a healthcare facility, but over 90% of their procedure is abortion. So it is basically an abortion clinic. The founder of Planned Parenthood, Parenthood, her name is Margaret Sanger. You may not know this. You should Google it. Don't take my word for it. This is what she said. This is direct quote. Color people are like human weeds and need to be exterminated. The most merciful thing that a large family does to one of its infant member is to kill it. That is abortion. Do you know Planned Parenthood are all in the poor neighborhoods, a lot of minority neighborhoods? 
abortions happen so much, so rampant in our society today. God is destroying families. God wants, I'm sorry, Satan is destroying family. God wants to save it. Be careful of schemes from Satan. What about Black Lives Matter? Such a big topic these days about Black Lives Matter. Does Black Lives Matter? Yes, it does. But let me tell you, be careful of the organization Black Lives Matter. You need to separate the two. You could care about Black Lives, not support the organization. But the organization is using Black Lives Matter idea to fulfill their agenda. Did you know that Black Lives Matter organization ignores the importance of fatherhood? Something that is missing in the Black family? I told you this before, almost 50% of Black families are without father. That becomes an issue. So this is from their website. It's not what I say that's important, it's what they say. This is from their website, you don't believe in me, you go look at it yourself. We disrupt, disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure. Just that first part of the sentence should worry you. We disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement by supporting each other as extended families and villages that collectively care for one another, especially our children, to the degree that mothers, parents, and children are comfortable. No mention of father because they're finding excuses for themselves. Fatherless family breaks down families. Successful family needs father in their home. So be careful who you're supporting because the organization may take you to a place you don't want to eventually. Healthy family requires children to be in school. I know this is another country issue topic, but hear me out. Academy, American Academy of Pediatrics strongly advocates that all policy consideration for the coming school year should start with a goal of having students physically present, present in school. The importance of in-person learning is well documented and there is already evidence of the negative impact on children because of school closure in the spring of 2020. Again, not my words. You can look, it up, look this up, you can Google this. This is from the American Academy of Pediatrics. Not from me. So why isn't school starting? Because of the pandemic, of course, because we're scared. Of course you're scared. If you're bombarded with charts like this every day, are you not scared? Everybody is scared. My coworkers are scared. You look at the number, you look at these charts that they show every day, going up and up and up. But let me give you a better perspective. COVID-19 death by age. Death by age. The percentage you see there is the percentage of people who are contracted with the virus who will die. In other words, if you look at 80 plus, 14.8% of the 80 plus patients who are contracting COVID-19 will die. So obviously the higher the number, the higher chance of you dying. Let me show you this. Just give you a better perspective. This is from February 1st to June 17th. So it's not including July. People who are dying from COVID. And if you look at the percentage of total, what's total death mean? Total death meaning total death of everything else other than COVID-19. Total death, including COVID-19. So if you see under one year old, there are eight infants who died, 0.1% of total death of those few months. And there's another study that shows out of those eight, five, just happen to have COVID while they have other diseases and conditions. 
So technically speaking, possibly only three are considered complete COVID-19 deaths. A study just came out, just came out. You can Google this as well. Just Google studies about school opening. Study that just came out have shown that children under the age of 20 were half as likely to contract the coronavirus as those over the age of 20. Among those who do contract the virus, 21% only of the ages 10 to 19, not even under nine, 10 to 19, only 25% have shown symptoms, which means 79% have no symptoms and they get better without any issues. So the studies show that school closures, a common intervention meant to stop the spread of the virus may not be a major factor in slowing down the spread of the virus. Here is a quote from the study. Again, not from me. Interventions aimed at children might have a relatively small impact on reducing SARS-CoV-2. That's actually COVID-19. This is the correct name of this virus, by the way. <clears throat> Transmission, particularly if the transmissibility of subclinical infection is low. The author, the group of authors speculates that children might have a built-in advantage that older people do not have. In early stages of life, children are exposed to several other more ordinary types of coronavirus. Those coronaviruses may cause nothing more than a common cold. It is safe to say exposure to those viruses might prime a child's immune system to be looking out for other viruses, other coronaviruses that look similar, including the COVID-19. In a sense, children who have been exposed to less deadly diseases might be better equipped to fend off more deadly strains. The safety and health of our children are of the utmost importance. I am not in disagreement, but that includes returning to school. This is also important for the whole family, especially the family who lives in a poorer part of the population. A lot of kids require school food. Nutrition is also from school. You and I are wealthy enough not to worry. So many other kids are suffering. Realize that Satan is working hard to break down our family. That's the spiritual battle. Break down of our education system. Colleges and universities are far cry from what they were before. Compared to 30 plus years of me going to college and now, back then cultural corner colleges are core cultural cornerstones dedicated to promoting the pursuit of truth, teaching students the great ideas of human history, and instilling civic virtue. All that seems to be gone now, long gone. Instead, our school has been all but completely overrun by institution-wide corruption with the radical activists masquerading as educators. School becomes an institution of indoctrination. So you're probably wondering, what does that word mean? What does indoctrination mean? Indoctrination involves pushing a certain opinion. It is the comprehensive effort, however, passively disseminating a viewpoint. It is the passive aspect that is the key, slowly. People who are indoctrinated with a certain narrative or ideology do not arrive at the intended conclusion through their own thinking. Not through their own thinking or coming to the conclusion, but they hear. They hear repeatedly in millions of different ways until they finally take it unquestionably that is true, even though it's not. That is called indoctrination. That's why you don't see diversity of ideas and thoughts in our schools today. If you disagree, I will prevent you in all possible ways to stop you from speaking. An example is UC Berkeley. Just look up UC Berkeley. Dissenting ideas are always met with protest and violence. What has our world come to? It's unfortunate that our students are taught to hate our country. Satan is going to break down your education system. Be very careful. Satan is working hard to break down history. 
and creating social disorder. Last week, I shared with you how our forefathers are deeply rooted in Judeo-Christian values. But unfortunately, there's a group called Antifa, anti-fascist, how ironic their name. They're destroying democracy with their ideology rooted in what? In socialism, Marxism, and anarchy. Violent mobs have defaced and torn down statues, right? You guys all see the news. Okay, you could tear down all the statues that you think were racist because of their association with slaves. Okay, I could understand that. But why would you take down statues of Frederick Douglass? Now, I have a point in this. Do you guys even know who Frederick Douglass is? Okay, this is just, um, I'm showing you that they're taking down statue. Who is Frederick Douglass? Frederick Douglass is one of the nation's greatest abolitionists. He's black. He's black. He was a slave and he was free, who dedicated his life to ending slavery and promoting American, African American justice. They took down the, his statue. It makes no sense. What about this? You know what this is? This is a memorial for the 54th Regiment Army. 54th Massachusetts, Massachusetts Regiment Civil War Army. A regiment that is all Blacks. Blacks fighting for their freedom. And so Antifa would go and deface and destroy this monument. Monuments like George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, all been destroyed. You guys know Sean King? There's a guy named Sean King, he's an activist, used to be the spokesperson for Black Lives Matter. You know what he said? This is what he said. Yes, I think the statues of the white European they claim is Jesus should also come down. They are a form of white supremacy. He added, all murals and stained glass windows of white Jesus and his European mother and their white friends should also come down. You look up the news, churches are being burned, why? because of words like this. I don't know about you, but it is clear that these people are not interested in resolving racial issues. Destroying monuments, burning churches, looting businesses, do nothing to bring attention to racism or to advance police reforms. They're simply using radical discontent to forward a Marxist socialist agenda. But Satan is behind this. Satan is working hard to break down our society. One more controversial issue, breakdown of churches, breakdown of churches. You and I all know the importance of church gathering. It is not about the need for social gathering in churches. We could do that with clubs. We could do that by going out with our friends. No, the need to come together to worship God is an imperative to the spiritual health of each individual. However, COVID-19, this pandemic is causing the fear of coming back to church. Let me tell you, Satan is working hard to keep us out of church. He brings fear, he brings doubts. Again, why? Concentrating on this number. This is all you see. Remember what I said? Satan is using politics to affect us. This is all you hear in the news. And because of this, churches are again closed by our governor. 
You know, there is a flu virus among us. A deadly one, yes. But understand this, deadly virus flu has always been around us for centuries. We need to put it in proper perspective. Why are church, why are church closed while mass protests, thousands of people are allowed? So the viruses are very smart, right? They're very discriminatory. They only go after churchgoers and business people, but they won't go after protesters. It defies logic. Have you ever thought about that? Don't hear my word for it. Let me give you what Dr. Scott Atlas, former chief of neuroradiology at Stanford University Medical Center, what does he say? I'm just gonna quote him because if I quote him, I will misspeak for him. It doesn't really matter how many cases there are. Instead, what really matters is who gets the cases. He added that the mortality rate for coronavirus is just 0.4% of people under the age of 70. So this is a statistic that is equal to or even lower than the seasonal flu. Alice says that the number of cases is increasing only because younger people are contracting the virus on a larger scale. The overwhelming majority are younger, healthier people. It only matters if we cannot protect the high risk people which we are protecting. How do we know? How do I know that we are protecting them? Because the death rates are not going up. Right now, the cases have been going up for three weeks. We have no increase. In fact, we have a decrease in death rates. You know, it doesn't matter if you get the illnesses, if you're going to fully recover and be fine from it. That is what people must understand. For younger, healthier people, there's not a high risk from the, this disease at all. In a quote, Dr. Alice goes on to say that the U.S. may be on a path toward herd immunity, which occurs when healthy people contract the virus and go on to provide protection for more vulnerable, high-risk people. Dr. Alice concludes, by saying it is ridiculous to blame the spike in cases on reopening business, instead putting the blame on large protests. It happens at the same time, if you just look at it. May, June, and now July. At the end of May and through June, it's not the guy getting his hair cut in the barber shop, he says. Proper perspective. This is the chart they should be showing, but they don't. Because Satan has an agenda. This is the chart you should be seeing. This is the death rate. This is the death rate. CDC reported 12 straight weeks of a decline, 12 straight weeks, declining coronavirus death rate here is a direct quote. Oh, here's another one. This one, just, if you, you could Google this, this just tell you what age level. Younger, older, 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 older. Of course, right? The older one are higher risk. Based on death certificate data, the percentage of death attributed to pneumonia, influenza, and COVID-19, they put them all together. Decreased from 8.1% during week 27, to 6.4% during week 28, representing the 12 weeks of a declining percentage of death due to COVID-19. Take a look at that graph again. The graph you don't see, the graph they don't show often, or maybe not at all. Look at this graph again. Look at this graph again. Look at this again. Proper perspective, proper perspective. Even a little bit more perspective for the week ending in July 4, because this is, oh, right, June 12. Well, what about now? What about July? Okay, I got it. I understand. You may want the latest. I'll give you July 4 and July 11th to give you some perspective. July 4th ending. 
reported 2,462 coronavirus deaths out of total death in the U.S., 42,000. 5.8%, that's dropping. July 11, there were 1,000 coronavirus deaths out of 24,000, almost 25,000. That is 4%. Satan is working hard to keep you out of the church. How many people are here listening to our Sunday services? I praise God that there's at least 60%. People need to come back to church. People need to come back to church. The enemy is real. The enemy is very real. It's Satan. It's Satan. The choice is ours. Life is all about choices. How you choose will determine where you go. Satan is about hate, rage, anger, violence, morality, division, and destruction. Salvation is simple. Believe in Jesus Christ, repent from our sin, and accept him as Lord and Savior, but the process is complicated. There is a war, a spiritual war, for your soul. There's a spiritual war want to take you away from God. Man, apart from God, is incomplete. It's nothing. It is walk, same as walking in the Holy Spirit. Simply, simple, but complicated. This is spiritual warfare. Understand that. You're battling against Satan, not the people around you. Satan is as real as God, but he's limited. Understand, he is limited in what he can do personally. He can only influence. But the choice is yours. The choice is yours. Ephesians 6, 12 tells us, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Our struggle will always seem to be against flesh and blood. It will always be seen against people. But no, even ourselves may be viewed as the worst enemy. No, it is Satan. Satan is here trying to take you away from God. That is a spiritual battle we have to be aware of. It is real. It is real. The spiritual battle is real. And we need to pray for one another because of that. Satan takes his time. Satan takes his time. Be careful that he influences you. And if you allow him to influence you a little bit, he will continue to influence you in the long term. You know, while it is unhealthy to be obsessed with Satan and demon, I'm not telling you you should think about them all the time, but don't deny his existence. Some, people, some Christians don't even believe Satan is around. Let me tell you who he is. For those of us who are weaker in our faith, Remember, God's power and authority over Satan is complete. You should not be afraid. The evil one is there, but you should not be afraid. But there's something you must do. There's something you must do. The word or the world. You got to make choices. It's your choice. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is alive and active sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Are you in God's word or are you in the world? The word or the world, your choice, your choice. You shall not wear a garment of different sorts, such as wool, linen mixed together. And the Bible talks about mixed cattle, mixed seeds, mixed intermarry. What do you think God is talking about here? I don't think God is saying you cannot marry other races. No. During that time, it's the pagan race that he's talking about. The commandment 
is symbolically forbidding the mixing of two things that don't go together. We cannot mix sin with righteousness. We cannot mix truth with falsehood. You cannot mix the God's word, God's word with the world. You have to make that choice. You have to make that choice. You either conform or be transformed. You either conform to the world or be transformed by the word. Romans 12, 2, you're all very familiar with this. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, is good, pleasing and perfect will. Conform means to comply, to act in according to harmony with a standard, a certain standard, the worldly standard. Transform means to change in form, appearance, structure, metamorphosis, to change in condition, nature, and your character. Transformed by the word of God. It's very simple. How much of your life is influenced by Satan? We just have to look at our own lives. Don't look at other people. Look at your own lives. Do you live differently from the world? For young people, are you living differently from what the world value is trying to instill? The world value that is against God's words. What are you doing with these values? Are you living with these values? Your nature should change after your salvation. Have you changed? Are you still conformed to this world? First John 2, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life is not from the Father, but from the world. Let's be transformed. Let's be transformed. Influence or influences. Are you going to be influenced? Are you going to be influenced to others? There's only one Holy Spirit. One Holy Spirit that's in you right now. If you're a Christian, the Holy Spirit is in you. But there's many, many demonic spirits. You know who they are? Fallen angels. They're not ghosts. They're fallen angels. Fallen angels that follow Satan. Satan is their leader. Satan is that these are at his disposal. The Bible tells us the rulers, the authorities, the forces, the, uh, the rulers and powers. All these evil spirits, all these evil rulers who's pushing an agenda that is not biblical are warring against God's people. The principalities and powers, the Bible says, of Satan are here to oppose to oppose everything and everyone that is of God. Their influence, their intention is to influence you in order to cause us to lose our witness and to bring us into bondage. And they do, they do this in three ways. Very, very cunning. Satan does this in three ways. Influence, oh, sorry. Inf influence. Influence you with media, social media. Influence you with people, education, economics, religion, okay? Influences take out your focus from God. If it takes away your focus from God, it is from Satan. So Satan influences you. Satan oppresses you. This is where we are so consumed with the things that is causing us to live in anxiety over our situation. Satan oppresses you that way. Then worse, Satan will possess you. This is where you have relinquished your will to Satan and not to God. That's Satan. But Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is in you. Greater that's it in you, guys greater that is in you than anywhere else. The Holy Spirit has one influence to teach us, lead us, and transform us according to God's word.
The Holy Spirit is one with the Father and the Son. He does nothing contrary to God's word or will. As we submit to his leading, it will allow us to conquer opposing forces in our lives. The Holy Spirit will give you wisdom. The Holy Spirit will give you the secret of God's wisdom. The deep things of God, the Holy Spirit will give you. So as I end, as I end, how do we overcome? My young loved ones, stay in God's word. Stay in God's word. Open up the Bible. I beg you to open up the Bible. Be transformed by the word. Be transformed by the word. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you into God's word. Lead you in God's word. Romans 8, 37, 38 says, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We have already been victorious in Christ. Christ has overcome death. Satan is defeated, but he doesn't want to go to the lake of fire that early. So he wants to influence you, influence you, take you away from God. God's mercy may wait for us to come back, but there will be a time when God will return and the world will end as we know it. Nothing can separate us from God. So let's stay in God's word. Let's be transformed by the word. Let's allow, to, allow the Holy Spirit to lead us into God's word. If you're not baptized yet, if you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I encourage you to do it now. Text the pastor. Text me and say you're ready to do it. If the Holy Spirit has touched you, be born again. Be baptized into the Holy Spirit. The Lord is drawing near. I really believe so. Because all the propaganda by the enemy shows us that the world may be coming to an end soon. Jesus may be coming soon. But again, through Christ, we are more than conquerors. Let us put on our armor. Let's put on our armor. And let's get ready for the spiritual battle. Remember, you're fighting from victory, not to victory. Christ has already won. If so, have us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much. Satan is making havoc in this world, creating chaos, leading Christians astray, taking us away from you. Father, we pray for all of us and all the Christians in this world that they may stay strong, stand firm. Despite all these attacks from Satan, your wisdom will overcome all these. Father, help us to come back to you, to your words, to the scripture, very clearly teaches what our choices should be. Father, help us so that everything we say, everything we do, is rooted in biblical teaching. Help us to come back to the word. Help us to fight Satan in this spiritual battle. Father, thank you so much because we know we've already won. Victory is already ours. What are we to be afraid of? Father, I once again pray for those who are ill. 
from any, any physical illnesses. Father, you be with them. Comfort them. And if it is your will, heal them. Father, we pray for all those people who may not be physically ill, but spiritually ill. Father, you also comfort them and heal them. Father, we ask that you, you heal this land. This land that we live in here in America needs a lot of your guidance. We pray that our government comes back to you. Not what they want to do, but we need to bring you back into our political system. We need our people who are in ruling positions, authority position, to fear you. Father, thank you so much for everything. Thank you for your love. Thank you for always being there for us. Your love is never ending. Your love is everlasting. Thank you so much. We pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's sing. Let us sing. You go, you go before I know that you've even gone to win my war. You come back with the head of my enemy. You come back and you call it my victory oh. ah. you go you go before i know that you've even gone to win my war, your love becomes my greatest defense. It leads me from the dry wilderness, and all I did was pray. And all I did was worship. And all I did was bow down. And all I did was taste it. Hallelujah. And all I save me so much better your way and all hallelujah great defender so much better your way you know you know I will my heart can see to find your truth. And mercy is the shade I'm living in. You restore my faith and hope again. And all I did was. And all I did was worship. Oh, and all I did was bow down. Oh, and all I did was stay still. Oh, yeah. And all I So much better. 
when I thought. When I thought I lost me, you knew where I left me. You reintroduced me to your love. You picked up all my pieces, put me back together. You are the defender of my heart. When I thought I lost you, you knew where I left you. You introduced me to your love. Picked up all my pieces, put me back together. You are the defender of my heart. When I thought I lost me, you knew where I left me. You introduced me to your love. The moment this is put me back together. You are the defender of my heart. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. You are our defender. You are always there for us. Father, we thank you so very much. But Father, we will come to you in humble obedience. We'll bow to you. We'll praise you for you are great. We pray that you will always, always discipline us when it's necessary. We want to be disciplined because we know you love us. Father, help us to have a better understanding of our situations. Give us wisdom. 
help us overcome the challenges in our lives. Thank you so much. Father, you are so great. We love you so much. Thank you so very much. We pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody. Um, 